Okay, hello everyone. Let's get started. So we start a completely new course on Swift programming language. So if you want to develop applications from for Mac, for iPhone, iPad, so Swift is a good choice for you. So we'll start from the very beginning. So I assume you don't have any prior knowledge of Swift. So today we'll uh, set up our development environment. Uh, we'll check some uh, Swift basics. So how we build an application, how we compile it and so on. Yeah. So first let's start by obtaining an Xcode. Yeah, so development environment. So we can do that completely free from App Store. So on the bottom here you can see App Store. So just launch it. If for some reasons you don't have it here, uh, we can do that from the launch pad as well. Uh, so basically here we can find all applications installed. Just type app, app store and you'll have it. Okay, let's go here. And in the search field, let's type Xcode and presenter. And here we go, Xcode. Okay, since I have already uh, Xcode on on my computer so but the new version is here so I can update it for now I'll I will not do that so please pay attention that the size is quite impressive for Xcode so you will obviously need some time uh, to download and install it once it is done here once again on the bottom panel you will have Xcode that the icon of the Xcode. Once again, if for some reasons it's not there, through the launch pad, Xcode, and here we go. Let's start it. Okay, so uh, since I have it for quite a long time, I have already some uh, uh, some projects listed on the right side. Um, as you have just installed it, so you will not have anything here. Let's just create a new Xcode project. And as you can see here, we have uh, multiple tabs, so we can create uh, different types of applications. Let's start uh, from a command line tool for Mac iOS, so we can uh, test it quickly. So once we are more or less familiar with uh, Swift, we'll move to iOS applications uh, development. Uh, but for now, let's choose Mac iOS command line tool. Here we can, uh, should specify a product name. So basically that's the name of our uh, project. Uh, let it be uh, Swift uh, Lesson 1. Organization identifier. So basically that's the identifier of, uh, of uh, organization. So usually we use a domain name. So for us, for me, it's the mobile.dev, so dev.themobile. And the bundle identifier is organization identifier, as you can see, plus product name. So basically, that's the identifier of our application. And programming language, we have multiple options, Swift and C languages. So C languages are a bit old, yeah, so it's recommended to use Swift. Uh, for any uh, Apple-related uh, development. Yeah, so here we go. Let's play ne play, press Next. Okay, uh, let's choose where we will store our uh, application files. So I have a special folder, Swift course. Let's create a new inside it. Let's call it Lesson 1. Okay, and we'll store everything in Lesson 1. Great. Okay. So here we go, and what we can actually see. So for now, we can see here by default uh, some information uh, related to our application as such. Yeah? So for now, we are not actually interested in that. Just pay attention uh, to the right tab. So here we have a name uh, where we store it. So project format. So I'm using the latest one, Xcode 13, yeah, compatible. So if someone will try to open this project on the earlier version of Xcode, it will fail. 
okay so let's close this tab by pressing uh, uh, this uh, inspector tab on the top right corner okay and here on the left we can see a structure of our project as of now you can see we have only one file in our folder it's main main.swift if we double click on it uh, we actually can see the file yeah, generated by xcode itself and you can see we have two lines of code for now uh, so the first one import foundation yeah so foundation that the library which contains some very basic uh, methods uh, classes of swift uh, so we import this foundation and another command is print yeah which allows us to print something in the console right so let's check whether it works by trying to build it uh, so we build it by pressing uh, mark button plus b okay and you can see oh i press it doubled and you can see that here i'm building it yeah let's see if it fails or everything goes as it should and you can see that build success succeeded right so meaning that compiler is able to build our application everything is fine okay so we just built it but uh, we didn't launch it if we want to build and launch it so uh, usually that's the case we should press mark button plus r run right so we're building it and then running okay so we are waiting to attach as you can see here in the status bar it could take some time especially when we launch it for, uh, for the first time when we do incremental builds they are uh, much faster okay and here we go we can see the output here hello world everything works fine okay so this print that's a method or a command yeah and inside brackets we have an argument yeah or variable which we provide and basically the text which is actually printed out in the console hello world let's change it a bit hello my name is dmitri so that's my name uh, let's recompile it so once we have changed something in our program let's uh, rebuild it and relaunch once again mark plus r and you can see hello my name is dmitri okay so seems everything works fine okay and but uh now let's talk a bit about about variables as you can see now uh, this text is so-called hard-coded meaning that we directly put the text uh, inside our function uh, but what if we want to change it so of course if the program is quite small it can be done quite easily but if there are hundreds or thousands of lines of code in our program to find where i should change it is quite quite challenging yeah so that's why let's move all this text into a variable and inside in switch uh, swift we have uh, two types of variables uh, we have a variable which uh, stores data which cannot be uh, changed yeah so uh, let type variable yeah my variable yeah, so the variable name should start with a small letter and if we have uh, two words like in my case in variable name uh, the second word and all following uh, words start with a big letter a big letter so called camel syntax let my variable and let's move everything what we have here inside our variable uh, let's copy and paste it okay yeah so we have just defined 
a variable my variable where we store this text and now let's provide my variable to this print function let's rebuild it and launch okay as you see we have the same output but now our text is inside a variable right what if after some time we want to change uh, the content of the variable uh, if we try to reassign something hello my name is Borea and print it once again print my variable let's see what happens let's rebuild it and you can see that build failed oh -ho. and what we can see here why it failed cannot assign to value my variable is a let constraint yeah so as i said if we use a keyword let we just uh, let uh, our compiler know that the variable is immutable so we cannot change what is stored there if it's not the case for us so we want to be able to change the content of the variable instead of uh, let keyword we should use var keyword meaning that the variable we define the content of it can be changed yeah so let's rebuild and rerun it okay so we see so when we define our variable the content is hello my name is dmitri and we print it here we go after some time we decided to change the content of the variable since we have defined it as a var type variable now we are able to do that and here we go hello my name is bora okay so that's a uh, very beginning of the swift language hopefully you enjoyed it so the next time we'll talk in more details about variable types uh, so the types of data our variable can store right and that's all for today thanks to all for watching still if you have some questions something is not working you want something to be discussed in more details just paste uh, your question under the video don't forget to subscribe so i expect new videos will come out at least two times per week Okay, so thanks to all for watching and welcome to Swift World. See you. Bye-bye.